From the studios of Iowa Public Television, this is the Des Moines Register presidential debate. The Republicans. Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. The Comptroller General has said the U.S. faces a tsunami of debt that is a great threat to our national security. Do you agree our country's financial situation creates a security risk, and why or why not? It's absolutely a threat to our national security because we've spent too much, we tax too much, we borrow too much, and we print too much. When a country spends way beyond it means, eventually it will destroy the currency. And we're in the midst of a currency crisis. Our dollar is going down rapidly as we speak. It's because we have lived beyond our means. We can't afford the foreign policy that we have. We have to cut back. We have to live it within our means. If we're going to spend money, we ought to spend it at home. And that is why we have to change this foreign policy. We can't afford it to do what we're doing today because it will destroy our dollar. What sacrifices would you ask Americans to make to lower the country's debt? And I'd like you to be specific. I think it's absolutely unnecessary to, to sacrifice. We want to give people more freedom, more chance to spend their own money. It's unnecessary. We can cut by looking at our foreign policy. We maintain an empire which we can't afford. We have 700 bases overseas. We are in 130 countries. We cut there. And then we have a better defense of this country, and the people get that money, and they get to spend it here at home. There's no need to sacrifice. We need more liberty, more rights for the people to spend their own money. And in, this, in that situation, there is no sacrifice and no need for it. Who in this country is paying more than a fair share of taxes relative to everyone else? The wealthy, the middle class, the poor, or corporations? The most sinister of all taxes is the inflation tax, and it is the most regressive. It hits the poor and the middle class. When you destroy a currency by creating money out of thin air to pay the bills, the value of the dollar goes down, and people get hit with a higher cost of living. It's the middle class that's being wiped out. It is the most evil of all taxes. One in five jobs in Iowa depends on exports to foreign countries, but we're also exporting a lot of high-wage manufacturing jobs. What's your plan for keeping foreign markets open while protecting good-paying American jobs? Well, <clears throat> we need to adopt free trade agreements with uh, other countries. Today, we inhibit the uh, export of, say, farm products to countries like Cuba. It's time we change our attitude about Cuba. Uh, we should be looking to open these uh, markets. But our markets get closed for monetary reasons because our chief export is our dollar, because we have the reserve currency of the world. People take these dollars and our jobs go overseas. You can't solve any of these problems if you don't look at the monetary system and how it contributes to these job losses in order to provide the prosperity for our people here at home. I uh, want to move on um, and hear the free statements from our next two candidates, uh, Congressman Paul first and then Senator Thompson. The goal of all political action should be to preserve liberty. We need more freedom in this country. We need to look to ourselves and what we are doing. We have drifted so far from our Constitution that the government, that the Constitution was written to restrain our government. Yet we've turned around and the Constitution now is used to restrain the people. But we have no chance if we don't restrain the government all that they do in undermining our personal liberties, controlling our economic well-being, and using our, uh, using it as an excuse to police the world. If we don't change the role for government, this country is going to suffer a very, very serious economic crisis. Congressman Paul, what's the biggest obstacle standing in the way of improving education in the United States, and how would you address it? Uh, probably the federal government. We've been involved at the federal level for over 50 years. We've had a Department of Education. It used to be the policy of the Republican Party to get rid of the Department of Education. We finally get in charge and a chance to do something, so we doubled the size of the Department of Education, and we have no child left behind. The teachers don't like it, the students don't like it, and the quality of education hasn't gone up. The cost of education has gone up. So we need we need to look to our local resources. We need to release the creative energy of the teachers at the local level. But what we can do immediately is to give tax credits. I have a bill that would give tax credits to the teachers to raise their salaries. At the same time, we should encourage homeschooling and private schooling and let the individuals write that off. The parents have to get control of the education. It used to be parents had control of education through local school boards. Today, it's the judicial system and the executive branch of government, the bureaucracy 
bureaucracy that controls things, and it would be predictable that the quality would go down. The money goes to the bureaucrats and not to this educational system at home. Realistically, what do you believe you could accomplish in your first year as president? Well, there's a limit what you can do in one year, and at home it's more difficult. You would have to work with the Congress, but the Commander-in-Chief could end the war. We could bring our troops home. That would be a major event. It would be very valuable. We could be diplomatically, uh, we could become diplomatically credible once again around the world. Right now, today, we're not. Even our allies resent what we do. We would, we would have no more pre preemptive war. We would threaten nobody. We would not threaten Iran. Now that it is proven once again, Iraq didn't have the nuclear weapon, had nothing to do with 9-11. The Iranians have no nuclear weapon, according to our CIA. There's no need for us to threaten the Iranians. We could immediately turn the Navy around and bring them home. And I think Thank this would you. be a major step toward peace. Over the past few months, we asked candidates who have spent time in Iowa about some of their core values, and we videotaped the answers. The internet is delightful. It is just delightful for finding the information. And uh, if, if there's a question that I need, ask, uh, you, can, you can find it. So I spend a lot of time getting information uh, that was at one time in my life was very difficult to find. There should be no excuse in this country anymore for not finding correct answers and analyzing the problems that we face because the correct answers are out there and judgment should be made to the best of one's ability. Congressman Paul, you're, you call your campaign a revolution, and I think it's safe to say that your brand of change is one of the most sweeping proposed by any candidate of either party, but getting your agenda through Congress would likely require a revolution of an entirely different sort. So how would you adjust your plan in light of political reality in Washington? Well, the secret is, is the uh, term revolution. Uh, wasn't my n word, and it didn't come up on our web page. It, it was coined by the supporters. But in a way, it is revolutionary to go back to the Constitution. And uh, we'd like to continue the old revolution. And uh, believe me, uh, freedom is unifying. We bring a lot of people together. People then are free to choose what they would like to do with their lives, free to choose how they would spend their money. And all of a sudden, we wouldn't be telling other countries how to live. But so this brings Congress. people together. And I think it's appealing to both left and right and middle. And our our campaign really has that appeal, so therefore we would bring the Congress okay. together. Okay, please suggest a New Year's resolution for one of your opponents here today. My advice would be to uh, uh, reread the oath of office, take it seriously, obey the Constitution. We can, we are well defended against all enemies foreign. We should be much more careful about defending against the enemies domestic.